Okay, we are back again with yet another playthrough of Crusader Kings 2 with Harald the Great Bear. Or should I say the Sleepy Bear? Or the Lazy Bear? Or quite honestly, I don't know what kind of bear he is anymore. Uh, he's not stressed out anymore, but um, uh, he's gained the content trait. Content characters are satisfied with their lot in life. They make loyal vassals, but are unsuited to intrigue. So, um, uh, I'd say we've hit a bit of a snag. We've hit a bit of a snag here, because, uh, oops, as I forgot to put my timer on again. Uh, so we had this encounter with uh, some of our fellow warrior lodge members one was sitting down with uh, harald trying to talk to him to becoming more ambitious and harald basically just um uh, threw it all right back in his face i have no idea what they were talking about i have no idea as to the nature and the details of their discussion but clearly uh Clearly something's haunting Harald once again inside his mind. I do believe it's the it's the old childhood demons playing with him again. Like as I've been talking about before, like how he is I still see him as an ambitious kind of guy. I still see him as a young man with with vigor and energy and a desire to accomplish something. But on the other hand, he's got this, he's got this repressed side inside of him that keeps fighting back every so often. He was, he was thinking about being shy and maybe this Warrior Lodge dude's word hit him so hard that um, uh, he started questioning himself. He's like, he's, he feels that he, he knows too little about politics and diplomacy to rule properly. He thought he was superior in military tactics. Then this guy here, King Sigurd, somehow magically turns around two losing wars and just brushes them. He just rips the carpet underneath their, f underneath their feet and just smashes them. Like nothing, he just instantly turned defeats into astounding victories. And Harald is just, just awe-inspired, like, wow. How the hell did he, do, did he do that? I couldn't do something like that. And so he's been finding himself in a self-confidence crisis, wondering, am I really suited for this? Am I really... Suitable to rule large swaths of lands? Should I not just look at what I have now and try to be happy? Like, I don't crave gold. I've got tons of gold. I've increased our prosperity tenfold. I'm constantly expanding our settlement. Um, I have a lovely wife, for the most part. I have six beautiful children with the seventh on its way um, and Sigurd for the most part is a good ruler our lands are kept safe he's expanding in his wars and everybody's leaving us alone so like th we're not left wanting basically is what Harald is saying but but it goes against everything that I, that me as the player, had planned out for him. Like, I wanted him to be the great warrior viking. I wanted him to be the founder of this great new dynasty that I've been planning to, to control over the course of many centuries. I don't know if I want to, if I want to play a game with someone just sitting on their ass all the time. Like, like that's not going to make... That not, that's not gonna make for entertainment. En it's not gonna make entertaining uh, viewing material, and it's not gonna be fun and stimulating enough for me to start off the first character being somebody who's la lacing around all the time. But on the other hand, 
I did say I wanted to roleplay uh, Harald, and roleplay him is what I'll do. I will stick to my guns. Like I said before, if he turns out a content character, I will play him out as a content character. I was dead still. I'll still go and loot and pillage occasionally because the econ uh, the settlement still needs to sustain itself economically. And we're like gaining no income whatsoever. We're not a feudal society, which means we can't collect taxes. So we kind of need to loot and pillage just to sustain ourselves. But clearly, Holland is not going to seek to expand his lands. He's not going to succeed. He's not going to strive to rise in the ranks or just do anything to improve his current position. Because clearly he's happy where he is now. And I can only hope that 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 satisfaction goes away somehow. And um, uh, I'm going to try to make that happen. Like, I'm not going to be gamey. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to use any, any obvious sort of tricks. But I do want him to accomplish something in life. I do not want him to just be where he is when he started off. I want him to have progressed somehow so I'm going to play him out as a content character uh, for the duration of the time he's got this trait I will not expand I will not wage war I will not try to rise through the ranks while he's got the content trait at the same time I'm gonna push the bounds and take as many liberties as I can justify so as to try and orchestrate in the game so that he somehow loses the content trait. I've got a few ideas about how to do that, but, well, it's no guarantee because cause you, you rely on certain events to pop up and they, they got to actually pop up. So in that sense, I believe I'm striking a pretty good balance. I'm sticking with the traits, but... <sighs> Still trying to push him from behind the scenes towards a direction we like. So, well, being a content kind of guy... Where are we anyways? We're leading troops in Skjelland. Uh, can we... Can we resign as a commander? Yeah, we're gonna resign as a commander. He's gotta be going out doing his own raids before too long. Uh, but before we go out on our own raids, we're gonna... Cancel our ambitions. If we're a content kind of guy, we shouldn't really be having any kind of ambitions to begin with. So we're gonna we're gonna leave that off entirely. We just have no ambitions anymore. Like, why should we? Why should we? We're happy with our lot in life, apparently. Um, we are gonna change our focus, though. He is going to switch from war focus to. A hunting focus and I'm justifying this story-wise by just saying well he enjoys looting and pillaging and he enjoys the occasional war but what's he gonna do when he gets back home from the war like he's gonna take up a new hobby he's gonna he's gonna enjoy the more simple pleasures of life you know making friends with the folks at home enjoying the nature of school looking after his family and uh, occasionally kill a great animal or two so yeah why the hell not this ambition's got benefits for his health and there's also a chance it triggers certain events that's gonna talk him out of being content which is what I personally is hoping is gonna happen but um, we'll see if the game we'll see if the game decides to play ball with me basically but at the very least uh, we're not making any move till we get rid of this trait we're gonna loot and pillage but that's as far as we're gonna go and the Chancellor's obviously gonna continue fabricating claims like we may not be ambitious but the Chancellor here is so at least he is gonna strive to doing his job to the best of his abilities because he didn't move here just to be sat on his ass doing nothing so he's gonna work for that claim 
even though we're not necessarily encouraging it, if you know what I mean. Anyways, I've rambled on for long enough. I want to get as much gameplay in as possible this time, so let's get time ticking, shall we? And while we're at it, we might as well... We might as well bring forth the men. We might as well go back to our, um, uh, our looting ways. We're supposed to loot, pillage, and plunder Regan here anyways. The chiefdom of Regan as per our, per our mission for the Warrior Lodge. How much do we need to, pr to get promoted? A thousand renown. I have a feeling we'll get that sooner rather than later anyways. Let's cross the sea and get that. No, we don't want to be a commander because you ain't fighting a war. Let us go, go, go. It's a bit of a shame because we're, we're pillaging a fellow Scandinavian here, but... Well, if that's what we were sent to do, that's what we're going to do. We'll let, let, let it take down by... Actually, maybe we won't let it take, take down by itself. We, we might need to go and do it quickly, so... Fuck it, let's do it quickly. We got 0. 0. 0.58 gold. Okay, this is the place we really need to take down. My wife Beata has really has been really letting herself go as of late. What was once a great, graceful, and delicate woman has slowly become an undignified and hefty glutton, only excited about her next great feast. No, no. <laughs> We've got high diplomacy skill, just warning her tactfully and diplomatically. Stop stuffing yourself, you pig! Oh jeez, she's, she's become a fatty! No, 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 uh, let, wait, what kind of a guy are we? We're proud, we're kind, we're charitable. You know, I don't think he'd be the one to insult his wife. We are worried about her not treating it seriously, though, so we are gonna tell her... Stop eating so much, dear. It's not good for you. It's only not good for the... for the... for the child. Okay. When are you actually gonna find this relic you keep talking about, Rikulfer? I was relieved to see that my words did not go unheard. Beata thanked me for my concern and promised me that she will start dieting immediately. Oh, great, great, great. She's adopting a hard diet already, getting rid of the, um, uh, of the fatty trait. Let's attack the place now. Yes! 14 gold, gold, gold looted. Let us quickly loot this place too. Yes! But, but... Nothing happened here, though. We we've looted the whole place now. We've looted the place, yet nothing's happened. So you're not coming to attack us, then? You're going to... It occurred to me that my wife's feeling somewhat gloomy as of late. The burden of her unborn child is surely causing some humoral, unbaral, uh, humoral unbalance that's affecting her mood. Yeah, let's buy her something nice. We're, we are generous that way. Oh, he's just staying there. He's not even worried about us. He's just sitting there doing his little thing. Oh, sorry. I haven't kept time running yet. Still just sitting there, though. Still just sitting there. Yep, we're, we're in the army. If nothing happens by the end of this mission, um, uh... Oh, wait, right, wait, it's this army that we've got to be careful about. Uh, uh. What? What? Hold on a damn minute, what just happened? What? Sigurd is dead! Sigurd Snake in the eye is dead! At the age of 41! He died of poor health! Oh my! 
Holy smokes! Okay, Uhtred keeps his position as Chancellor. His um, uh, stepmother becomes the new CRS. Friedrich is the steward. Wow! Long live King Hordknut. Who's, who's in terrible shape though. He's got tuberculosis. He's malnourished. He's paranoid and a coward. He works hard, but he gets angry a lot and is stressed out as shit. He has not turned out to be a good ruler. He has not turned out to be a good ruler at all. Uh, doesn't his... Oh, he had a daughter too, Grima. Oh, and he becomes independent. His second son, Tuli, becomes independent and takes these two lands for himself. Whereas his half-brother, Hordeknut, keeps the rest of the fractured... No! No, he got Hallam too! Can I declare war on that? Got raised levies. I'm not gonna declare war anyways, because, um, uh, remember we got the content trait, but... ah, oh, That would have been perfect! God damn it. Do we like, uh, Hordeknut? No, we don't like him at all. We want to see it on his council. We, we've, um, uh, got absolute... Right, that's another thing I was gonna go through. Our high chiefdom has got the maximum tribal organization. Basically, what tribal organization means is you can compare it to, um, uh, a modern-day federal government. Like, take the one in the United States, for example. You've got the states that enjoy a great degree of autonomy, like they've got their own legislature, legislature they've got their own laws, their own constitutions, and little mini-governments and everything. But they're all part of a, uh, a common union that itself also forms its own its own jurisdiction, basically. So what he's doing here, he's increasing the power of the federal government at the expense of the autonomous chiefdoms. So we do not like this. We do not like the... We do not like this big government that they've been implementing here, basically. And because we've got a new king, the council is discontent. That means everybody currently in the council are now free to join in factions. We could start a faction to put King Tulid as the head of Hjelland instead, but we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna bother about lowering the tribal organization either. This is petty politics and uh, it was not something I meant for Harald to get involved in to begin with and he's got even less reason to do that now because he's pretty happy about things the way they are, so... <sighs> oh well. Are we following Hordeknut, by the way? Yes, we are. He's still a person of special interest. He's married to Irsa and he just had a baby son, Vagn, who's weak. Oh, that's not good. He's got a weak physique, um, so he ain't he ain't gonna be much of a warrior. He's absolutely incompetent in matters of diplomacy. Oh my, oh my, that, that, that does not bode well. I am uh, fearful for the future of Skorna here. <coughs> Sorry. But he does want to appoint me to my counselor as the steward. You want to make me steward? You sure that's a proper use of my... Of my skills? Wait, wait, sorry. I want to get to the council. The leech council. He wants to fire Friedrich. And put me on instead. Well... This time I'm gonna take him up on his offer. I'm... Then I don't get to loot and raid and pillage and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna politely decline. I'm gonna politely de decline. He, I still want to be able to loot with him. 
I still want to be able to go out and loot and, um, uh... Ooh! And she's gaining us some legend, apparently, but... We don't need these guys now. Here's a trick I know you can use. To make them into looters and pillagers. <laughs> Okay, so we've collected as much, about as much gold as we can. We're gonna put everybody on the boats. Then we're gonna travel to another destination. Ooh! And we've got a daughter named Helena. Only thing is, I don't know if Helena is a real Viking name. Like, no, it doesn't strike me as something that Vikings would name their children. So I'm going to remove that name and pick up my trusty list again. Her name will be... Refna. It's not a nice name, but... Oh well, it'll do. Welcome, Refna. So Knut wants to groom an heir. That's gonna be his son, Vagn. And we don't want to be a commander. We want to be our own commander, because clearly... It hasn't benefited us to 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 take part in the service of our liege, even though we got a different liege now, but not just yet, okay? And now that our now that our troop numbers are split up into smaller units, we're actually going to start appointing our other commanders. We're gonna appoint Dyre here, who we got I got no idea when we got him, but we're gonna put him here. And then we're gonna use our renown to 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 call forth a lodge commander. We're gonna call forth a commander from our warrior lodge. And I wanna do that right now, so a promising member of the wolf warriors, Gunhilder. Oh, she's she likes to eat. Cause she's um uh, gluttonous. Uh, but she likes, to, and she's paranoid, but she likes to read books, and she's also from Lund. Wow, a lot of people are coming in from Lund, and she's, she is a professional strategist too, which sounds really fantastic. So a promising member of the Wolf Warriors is eager to test her mettle in battle and prove her loyalty, fighting by my side and leading my armies against the enemies of Skåne. So, I expect great things from you. Gunnhildr. Perfect. Oh. Oh, I can choose. I can vote for who's gonna be the heir. Well, I'd prefer Vagn. Preferably Vagn. I'm gonna vote for Vagn. Uh, Cause I don't want us to be part of Mecklenburg. And I wanna be able to take this land when we finally get rid of the content trait, so it makes the most sense. Plus, it's gonna make our leash happy that we're voting for his his choice of heir. Still got the blood of Ragnar in you. Okay, so where where do we go next to loot and pillage? I kind of want to go to Friesland here, but they've been oh sheesh, they've been afflicted by. A Plague, it seems, and that that's not good. We don't want to go loop places where there, there are terrible diseases. So can we sail along a river somewhere? 1,072. How many men have we got? 1,700. Do we want to loop the church? want to loot the church here? He looks like a woman. Huh. What about Tver? That's also what you... All these places are churches. Which I suppose makes sense, because churches were pretty filled to the brim, so yeah. Let's go for it. Down the River Rhine. We sail. And then when we go home, we're gonna go hunting. He made a child ruler? Oh, 
oh wait, what happened to, to Holmger? He died in the dun- Ooh, he got captured by this dude and died in his dungeons! So this 13-year-old kid gets to be the cupbearer. Great. Actually, now that I'm... Now that I notice he's the ruler, I'm beginning to wonder if we shouldn't start... forging some alliances here. I mean... Our kids are gonna be old enough that they can be betrothed soon. And, uh... Having a couple of strategic marriages wouldn't be all that bad. We should betroth our eldest daughter Hilda. Yes, that was her name. We should betroth our eldest daughter Hilda with uh, the chief of Bornholm here. And I know that this is probably not the most prestigious marriage out there, that we should really be going for kings and dukes and uh, whatever else, but we are a content man, remember? And it wouldn't be appropriate for someone with just a chief level title anyway to aspire that high. Like, a duke is gonna expect to marry his kids to a fellow ducal family, or maybe even royalty. There's just no realistic chance that they would take kids this far down the hierarchy, so to speak. Like. See, this is why the content trait messes up everything. It just gets in the way of everything we want to do. We are going to discuss the possibilities of a betrothal between these two, though. I don't want to give him an artifact. I want to betroth my eldest daughter Hilda with him. It seems like he'll accept it. Matrilineally? Of course not. He wants to spread his dynasty. It is going to result in a non-aggression pact. Oh, wait a second, that's something I gotta think through. Because if, if, if we got a non-aggression pact with them, we can't attack them. Oh, that's not good, that's not good. Ho ho hold off a second, will you? How about Vine? Can we marry our daughter to the ugly son of Vine? Yes, we can! We can, actually! Honestly, I feel the, this would be a much more fruitful alliance. Uh, that's definitely worth considering. I should have done this all of this earlier. I should have looked into this sooner and... <sighs> How about Bjorn the second? Can he marry... Ivar Eriksson? Let's check. Yes, and he would agree too. And he's got like... Oh no, wait, maybe he doesn't? Hold on, let, let me take a look at Bjorn Jansi, does other... other kids. He's at war, we don't want to fight him. Why isn't he getting any... any... Why aren't they getting any claims? would want to marry someone that's got a claim on the kingdom. I'm gonna think about this um, uh, off camera and then uh, we'll see how I deal with things. How's it going in England by the way? Wow, Scotland has just been absolutely reduced to nothingness. Ooh, Ivar, Ivar Bianlos has died. He died of an infected wound last year. Yeah, obviously. No, that child is Norse. That child is Norse. And obviously, this, the very child that gets to inherit the title remains a Catholic. Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Norse faith still has still got... Good grip on Britain here, as we take a look at Aquitaine. And Italy... Oh, they won! Italy won their war on the Byzantines, and took this little piece of land. Wow! You just found yourself beaten there, uh, Basileos. And what was that? I thought they... 
They're now waging war on Venice. Or no, actually, Venice is declaring an excommunication war. Because remember, King Louis here has been excommunicated. So what Venice is doing is they're attacking Italy in the hopes of deposing the excommunicated king in favor of someone else. Most likely his eldest son, Prince Simon here, who's been baptized by the Pope himself. So we'll see how that goes. How goes the Reconquista, by the way? It doesn't seem like you've won. Okay. The Sultan here died of depression, so his... Grandchild, I believe? Yeah, his grandchild has been the one to take over. And clearly... They're still with you. How did that pretender war go? Oh, That pretender war must have gone to hell too because... Yeah, it looks like it's done and dusted. That's kind of a shame. Anyways, let's keep moving forward. Wait, stop, stop, stop. Oh, I've become the law speaker. Nice, nice. Okay. Where are you, Gunhild? Let us land in the city of Cologne, which is Köln in both German and Swedish. And let's loot this place. Yeah! Lotharingia still too caught up in their own wars to, um, uh, to have time to deal with us. And we can't build anything more for the time being because we're either not advanced enough or we don't have enough prestige. How much would it cost to build a new holding? 98 prestige. What do you mean does not have holy order? Only one tribe can live in each, in each county. Uh, that sucks. I don't want to build in the temple. We're not a religious feller. We'll have to keep an eye out here, just to make sure we don't get beset by enemy troops. Okay, okay, this is a pivotal point. Hilde is now going to adopt a formal education. We've raised her in accordance with, the, with her childhood focus. Now we're about to pick for her a final education. Sadly, she didn't become the martial warlike girl we were hoping for uh, because she's indolent really she is playful but not in the sense not in a warrior like sense but you know what that's fine that's fine um so because these here traits are marked as green it means she would perform excellently if we gave her an education in diplomacy or intrigue whereas if we gave her an education in religion or stewardship she would do poorly because her skills uh, just contrast too strongly with what those educations would be about like it's difficult for a for an indolent and tired child to spend her days reading numbers and a playful active child isn't going to enjoy reading books and attending sermons all the time. I think we're going to give her an, an education in diplomacy, actually. I don't see her as an intriguey kind of fella. She's kind of lazy. She's curious. She's energetic. She's going to use that energy to affect hearts and minds. She may not be a warrior deep down, but I can feel she's going to be a ferocious diplomat. So there you go, honey. Let's take a look, by the way. Uh, we're not going to recruit her to the warrior lodge. Let's ch take a look at the betrothals and see what we've got out there. No, 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 Jesus. Just the men in our realm. That would, wouldn't... That wouldn't go down too well. She can't marry anyone yet because she's adult. Let's 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 wait with her for a while. 
Let's just wait and uh, see what happens. Let's wait until I come up. Oh! That's very nice and tactical of you, um, uh, King Horde Knut. You've lowered the... You've lowered the laws from maximum organization to high, so you've reduced government in a, in a bid to appease your vassals, which... Yeah, I would say is a very good idea. Make people like you a bit more, why don't you? Ooh! Olaf of um, uh, Heidmark has been killed in a duel by Harald Horfager here. Wow, look at this dude. Yeah, he wants to be king of Norway. That exp explains his expansions into these here lands. Let's see how that goes. As we continue to loot and pillage the Church of Köln. It's a good thing we didn't go up here, because clearly the disease seemed to have taken most of these places. Just hope it doesn't come to him. Yes, another fellow of the Wolf Warriors has been killed. Cool beans. What? Wait, what? What's the Byzantine fleet doing here? Why is there a Byzantine fleet landing out here? That doesn't seem to make sense. I bet you the people of Scone have never seen Byzantine ships before. So like this is a an exotic new sight that's appearing before them. Okay, we got 41 gold. Ooh, and we've captured somebody, Usterhild, and this here child. So we're immediately going to ransom... No? Oh, that's cruel. He has no interest or care for this child. What, what about the woman? Uh, wait, where, where do we ransom her? There you go. He has no interest in her either. You know what, okay, okay, we're, we're gonna... We're gonna release the kid. Because we're... We're a nice ruler like that. But... Sadly for her, the woman ain't getting off that easily. Harald is gonna claim his first concubine. There we go. Now he's gonna join the ranks of other Viking rulers to grab himself some spoils of war. I'm sure she doesn't appreciate that, but hey ho, these those were harsh times. He's gonna have a lot of kids now. Ooh, ooh. Oh, what's happening here? Knut, Horde Knut of Själland has declared the Själander conquest of Friesland on King Ludovin the Liberator. So it's that place, right? He wants to expand his grip on the North Dutch coast by claiming this piece of territory. And the king's secluded in court because disease is spreading across his lands and he's already got... He's already defending from a conquest of Friesland by this other Viking dude here, so... You're gonna have to hurry up, Horde Knut. Otherwise you ain't getting nothing. Yes, yes, sure, whatever. We accept mostly because we've, uh... We haven't got much other choice. Ooh! Jesus, are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Fifteen years! Fifteen years it's taken us to get a flipping claim on a goddamn territory. Like I said, um, uh, being a content character, we are not going to press this claim. We are not going to go to war 
over this particular claim, but I'm still going to say we use the claim just so we acquire e the claim. And this is because, as you've witnessed, it can take everything between 15 days to 15 months and even 15 years to get just one claim on a territory. I don't want to risk going through that process again and risk Harald possibly dying waiting to get a claim. So I'm going to use this one. We're just going to justify it with the fact that he says, well, look, I just did the work you asked me to do. So just be happy with it or I'll, pa or I'll pack my bags and go. And well, he didn't have much to say about that. So you're going to do the same thing with Bornholm here. Yeah, it will not be inherited to our kids, so if he doesn't find a way to press it in his lifetime, we're gonna have to start from, uh, start all the way from zero by the time we get to the next ruler. How much gold have we collected? Wow, 107 gold already as we're looting the city of Dietz. Mark and Brauweiler. Ooh! Dietz has been looted of 37 gold. No, Rikulfir. No, we cannot spare the soldiers. Make do with what you've got. How many times do I have to tell you? Where's Hord Knut? Oh, Hord Knut's not even commanding any troops. He's just sending Uhtred to do the dirty job for him. How is Uhtred doing, by the way? Ooh, he's got kids! Ooh, okay. <laughs> his eldest son was born to his concubine, and he's called him Uwake. Uwake Uhtred's son. And Tura. Oh, who's, who's got a hair lip? Poor baby. But at least she was born to his proper wife, not to his concubine. How's our concubine doing? Still not happy with us, but she's super attractive and a bit of a mystic. She'll come around to us, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so the Slavic ruler here has formed a faction. Oh, god damn it. This would be perfect. If only we weren't content with our lot in life, we could have joined this independence faction and got out without having to trouble ourselves declaring the war ourselves. Oh, that content rate's ruining everything. I'm really pissed I got that. I'm really, really upset about it. Yes, yes, cool beans. Ooh, now Ravn is getting himself some educational traits. And yes, yes, as we'd hoped and prayed for, he's perfectly suited to have a martial education. He's rowdy and willful. The two very traits that works best with an education in war and uh, a military focus. So you're absolutely going to have an education in that. Let me take a look at your, your candidates for a partner, none of which I'm happy with. We're going to be looking out for partners for him too. Don't you worry about that. He's not even honorable enough to lead troops on his own, is Horde Knut. I don't think we're liking him very much, if I'm being honest. I really don't. So are we getting this here castle? Yes, we are. 28.68 gold and we imprisoned another another woman here a baroness the baroness of mark <laughs> would he be willing to ransom his wife he would actually but ah you know what we're gonna we're gonna take her for ourselves thank you very much 
I'm glad you understand. So he's got two concubines now. I think we can have a maximum of three. So, yeah. Wonder where the next concubine's gonna be from. As we loot and pillage this final church. And we could still carry up to 400 gold. That is absolutely breathtaking. They'll be writing stories about this in Cologne, I believe. How the Great Bear completely demolished their entire province. Do we go on to Tver after this? Apparently we don't, because that was the timer. I'm gonna allow us to continue to uh, till at least the end of the year. Before we pause it. Wait. Brauweiler has been looted. And this guy is known as the Mule. What a donkey. Ho ho ho. There we go. We paused it exactly on January the 1st. And uh, we're gonna leave it off right here. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how... Our new king does. I don't believe he's gonna do very well. And neither neither is his concubine. She's already calling him a tyrant. Am I calling him a tyrant? I am! Ooh. What did he do that's tyrannical? I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, apparently he did something. And he's just sitting back on his ass here at home while his troops are sent to war. I don't quite understand. Ooh! And his father died. A mangled mess because he got himself into a fight somehow. So now it's Ludovine the second of Frisia. A legitimized bastard boy who's been baptized by the Pope himself though, so... Yeah! I'm eager to see what's gonna come out of that, so um, uh, I hope you... I've enjoyed this little playthrough. I hope you will come back to join me again next time and see what um, uh, Harald the Sleeping Bear is going to be up to next. So take care of you all. Have a good day. Have a good evening and a good night, wherever in the world you are. And I will see you again next time.